Hello friends, welcome. This is Patty Bennett. We are going to explore a very fun technique today featuring watercolor pencils and a Stampin' Blend color lifter. So you might think, well, that's not the usual combo. I usually use this with my Stampin' Blend markers. I'm going to show you how to use it with watercolor pencils. So this is part four in our technique class series. If you've been following along, you know that I started this last fall. Of course, my goal was to do one a week, and with the holidays, that didn't quite happen. So here we are in January with part four. If you hop over to the corresponding blog post for today, which if you're on my blog, you're there. If you're watching on YouTube, then the link will be below. You just have to click view more or see more and the description will expand and you'll find the blog post. You'll find the download so that you can keep this handy and you'll know what this technique was all about. And then if you missed it, we also had part one, two, and three earlier. And those are linked on the blog post as well as uh, I will link them in the video description. So if you're also just looking for my blog, it's pattystamps.com. I have been blogging there for about 15 years. I've been a demonstrator for Stampin' Up! for almost 28 years. And I just love sharing tips, techniques, and card samples with you. I especially love flowers, so I thought I would show you with the Petal Park bundle today. This is in the January 2023 catalog. So Petal Park has a stamp set with flowers and leaves and a coordinating punch so that you can punch these flowers out, which we'll do after we color them so that you can see. And the watercolor pencils there are two assortments, and so I've kind of got mine all, can you see here? They're, they're all just mixed and matched in a pretty coffee mug. I don't really remember from day to day what's in pack one and what's in pack two, because they're all mixed up. But if you wanted to just start with one assortment, you could if you wanted to start with getting both of them. Of course, you can do that. And the supplies are all linked below this video. They are on my blog and they are in that free technique sheet. So there you go. You'll find them easily. So let me just show you what I did with these blue flowers. This is just the um, super easy way to show you how to do this. I simply took the Pacific Point watercolor pencil and I concentrated putting color down here towards the center of the flower. Oops, have a little stray goody there. We don't need that. All right, so just down here towards the center of the flower. You don't want to color the whole petal. So do you see how I just have sort of that ring of color of blue? Then I took my Stampin' Blend Color Lifter. Now I've been using this a lot, so it's a little bit stained, but if you're concerned, all you have to do is kind of scribble, kind of like a blender pen, if you have used that before, same idea. So it's clean even though it's stained. And then I'm just going to get the blue on the tip and pull towards the outside, towards the tip. I'm not gonna go all the way. So I'm just pulling color toward the tip, but not all the way. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do after this step is kind of clean off some of that blue and then continue to feather that out towards the tip. And my goal is not to have the entire petal blue. I really like the white out at the tip. So you just need to make sure that your uh, color lifter isn't completely saturated with the color. And that's all there is to doing that technique with one color. <laughs> I mean, isn't that simple? It's so pretty. So again, color into the center with the uh, watercolor pencil, pull it towards the outside, but don't saturate the entire thing unless you want the whole thing colored one color. That's totally fine, but the goal of this technique is more 
to have the, the colors blend and fade and not just be a solid image. So for instance, here's the difference. If you stamp the outline and then you stamp the filler piece, because I don't know if you noticed in the stamp set, here's the outline, here's the filler. So then you just get a very uniform filled in image. But I wanted to try this technique with sort of feathering that color out. Here's stamping with the stamp in Mango Melody. Same color, it's solid. But when you use this technique and you do this fun blending idea, look at these beautiful images that you can get. And then you can also do it with the leaves. So we'll color a leaf and I'll show you that. But aren't they beautiful? I really love this technique. And of course, I used all the patty colors. These are what I call patty colors. These are all my favorites. So let's do a leaf real quick so I can show you that. I used, which one is this one? Garden green to fill in down a little bit by the tip. The more color you put there, of course, the deeper saturated your image will be. And then the granny apple green towards the tip. We'll just make sure we don't have any blue on there. And then I start at the dark and feather up towards the lighter color. And then you can start with the light color and feather back down to make sure that you're maintaining some of that lighter color and not filling the whole thing in with the dark. So let's do this one real quickly so that we kind of copy this idea where I used several colors. Now, any colors will work. You can use whatever you want. I think I will start with some real red right in towards the center. I am going to put, let's do, I think, cameo car. I mean, Calypso Coral. Ah, did you hear that slip? Cameo Coral, that's an old color. You can tell how long demonstrators have been around by some of the old colors that they accidentally say. <laughs> and then I'm going to use Daffodil out at the tip. And because Calypso Coral and the Real Red were fairly close, I'm going to grab the Cherry Cobbler to deepen the red down here towards the center of the flower. I just want that a little bit deeper. So I'll show you this before I blend it. So you can see I've got actually four colors on there. You could do two, you can do three, whatever you'd like. Make sure that green is not on the tip. And then I'm going to pull from the inside out. And then kind of what I just showed you with the leaf, I am going to go from the yellow back in so that I can maintain some of that yellow without going over it with my darker colors. And that's it. It's so quick and simple to do beautiful blending with the Stampin' Blends Color Lifter. You may be thinking, well, why not just use the blender pen? One thing I found was that the blender pen will tend to kind of pill up the cardstock a bit if you keep going over it. This seemed to be, I guess, gentler. Would that be a better word? Uh, I just enjoyed this more, and I saw this technique at our Stampin' Up! On stage event in November, and my jaw just dropped. I'd never th seen this before. I loved it. I loved trying it, as you can see. So then, when you have all of these colored, and in fact, I really, while I'm coloring these, I'll just tell you, you may be looking for, this is a, a Friday video. You may be looking for my live. You may be thinking, this doesn't seem live, and it's not. You're right. This will be on my blog on Friday, January 27th, and my goal was to do this as a live video, 
but I have some family commitments that day, so I'm pre-recording this. And I do really miss chatting with you. I'm sorry that we're not having that opportunity today. I will do my best to be live again uh, next week, but today this is pre-recorded. So I hope you're enjoying it as well. I'm just going to punch these out to show you then how simple it would be to add these to a project. And I always flip my punch upside down and do my punching that way because it's just so easy to look right through the punch, see what you're punching, and then punch them out. So here we go. They're so beautiful. They can be added to a project. Oh, they're so gorgeous. Aren't they pretty? I just love these. They're so beautiful. So you can see here on this finished card, I have added them to a designer tag. So this was the shape of the tag. And I'll show you how I stamped the background leaves and then filled in with the punched pieces. And then before you go, I have a couple other tips and another sample. Oh, two more samples. I'm looking over here. Two more samples, so don't go yet, okay? So let's look at how best to stamp the leaves and then fill in with all your pretty little flowers. So the leaf stamp is two parts, just like the flowers. So our flowers had an outline portion that we stamped, well, I stamped, excuse me, in black, and I colored them in. Or I showed you the difference if you want to just fill it in with the filler stamp. You can do that. They layer together very nicely. The leaf portion has the outline and the filler. So for this card, to kind of keep going with this theme of coloring in, I'm going to only stamp the outline portion, and then I will color it in and show you that. But I have samples over here of using the fillers so that you can see how the solid images layer with the outline. So here is our outline, and I am going to stamp in shaded spruce. It's dark enough. It kind of looks like black, but it has... Um, it's going to go a little bit better with these brighter colors than the black outline, I think. I mean, you can do whatever you'd like, seriously. You can make it however you'd like, but I like this look. So I am stamping it in shaded spruce. And then I'm going to color in with the same two colored pencils, the garden green and the granny apple green that we did on the small leaf that punched out with the punch. So we're going to use the same colors so that this kind of uh, coordinates. I'll pull this back in so you can see. So I'm going to use my darker green, the garden green. And, you know, you can put the color wherever you'd like. If you want to make a, a leaf kind of half and half, or if you want to do the darker at the tip, if you want to do the darker at the base, if you just want to do it one color, totally up to you. It is your piece of artwork, so you can do it however you'd like. So there's our darker green, and then I'm going to add some of the granny apple, which is the lighter shade. I remember years ago, Stampin' Up! had, I think it was a kit, and it had some watercolor pencils, and at the time, it included Lemon Lime Twist. Does anybody else remember that color? And I loved that color. I think it was before Granny Apple Green. And so I got the kit just because I wanted the Lemon Lime Twist watercolor pencil. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just super simple blending them together. This literally makes the colors melt together, almost as if you're just kind of melting butter in a pan. That's what this is like. They're just melting and blending together. It's so simple. And the reason I'm scribbling off in between some of them is I just don't want this to be super, super saturated with the dark green. So I really want the lighter greens to show. 
and in an effort to make the light green pop a little bit, coloring in these tiny little leaves with the tip of the Granny Apple Green pencil. I'm not going to blend this, I'm just giving it a little extra color. So there we have the lights and the darks of the greens. Now if you wanted to stamp the flowers on here, this large flower fits really nicely right there. So if you wanted to stamp, that's where you would stamp it and it would fill it in with stamped images. And in fact, let me just go ahead and show you a sample of that. I was going to save it for the end, but I'll show you. This is what it would look like if you just stamped those three flowers. I've added one popped up that was punched out, but those are stamped. And this is also an example of not coloring it in with pencils. This is an example of stamping the outline stamp and the filler stamp. Okay, so it's a different look. But instead of stamping on here, I just simply wanted to add some of the flowers and you can do some flat with your adhesive and then you might wanna do others with Stampin' Dimensionals. My Stampin' Dimensionals are buried. They're over there somewhere. I'm not going to dig. So I'm going to grab my black ones and it's going to be fine because they are not going to show. But I normally would have used white and somehow they are just buried over there. That's okay. And we'll do a couple more popped up and a couple of them flat. And I'm varying the three sizes because you have the three sizes of flowers from the punch. And let's see, I think I'll do, oh, look how pretty. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. And let's do another blue one. We need another blue. Maybe, maybe that size tucked right there. Yes, tuck that one under like that. And look how beautiful that is. So simple, so pretty. I just love this. I think this is just a gorgeous set. And of course, if you follow me, you know, I love the flowers, anything flowers and floral. That's my jam. <laughs> Here's a one more example of using the flowers that were stamped and blended. So this one is just using the real red. This one had those three or four colors. Here's one where we stamped the two layers. So just all sorts of different ways that you can use this set, stamp these images, and fill them in. I do have this example. I'll just show you real quick. If you wanted to stamp and then do the filler, then your leaves would look like this. So that would be the extra solid leaf part that you add. And then you would stamp your outline flowers and then you would do your filler flowers. So that's kind of the progression. If you just wanted to just do plain stamping, of course, you know, you could always come in and add, um, add some that are popped up to add a little more so that you had more than three flowers. But I just wanted to show you that real quick as well. So again, thank you for joining me today. I hope you loved this technique. I think it's just a fabulously fun technique. You can use this if you are stamping animals, leaves, trees, like any outline image. You can use this technique. Doesn't have to be flowers. You know, I'm just the flower girl. So if you are looking for the free technique sheets, this is class four. We have all four on pattystamps.com available free to you. And I also will put a link so that you can view all of them and click all of the blog posts if you had missed any previously. So thank you again for joining me. I hope that if you need any supplies or a catalog or have questions about joining Stampin' Up! that you will reach out to me through my blog. So you can go to pattystamps.com and click on the Contact Me button, and I would be happy to chat with you or answer your questions. And if you would like to shop with me, pattystamps.com shop is the easiest way to get to my Stampin' Up! online store.
So thank you again so much, and I will see you next week. Bye.